Hey everybody, welcome to the podcast. My name is Adam McLean. We're gonna kick off today's show with a tip from Dave Ron, but I need to set it up a little bit. You might remember Dave from a show way back in the very beginning, like in September, and uh, he did a thing on small groups. Well, when we were done, I asked him, I said, Dave, you are like the guru of parachurch ministry. Can you tell us what does the parachurch youth ministry in general have to teach us that do church youth ministry? And this is what Dave had to say. You know, I've been uh, in student ministry for, gee, 38 years now, it seems like, um, uh, quite, a, quite a long time. Most of that time in a full-time employment with Youth for Christ when I wasn't a, a college professor and sort of working on the side. But I've had the dialogue and the dance with people who are working from church backgrounds as well as those who are in a, the parachurch world. And um, I'd just like to make a couple of candid observations. I think that, that uh, first of all, student ministry in general is getting um, much more professional. We're, we're, we're getting our act together in terms of being serious about our jobs, about what we do as students. Uh, but we're also um, sometimes, sometimes floundering in terms of what the ultimate end of our, 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 our job is about. In fact, sometimes if, you, if you're not real clear-minded about what you're called to, uh, in the church, you may suffer from having just lots of bosses and trying to meet a lot of expectations. And uh, at the end of the day, at the end of the week, at the end of the month, I've heard a lot of people in church settings who are going, this is not what I had in mind. Um, there's not enough life change. There's not enough working with kids. There's an awful lot of keeping programs going. Uh, there's not enough um, really seeing powerful differences. Uh, someone's asked me, what I think the difference is sometimes between an organization like Youth for Christ and uh, a number of different uh, folks who lean into church ministry. I think the, the clear-mindedness about mission is one of those things that is, is a huge difference. Um, you just don't jump into something where you're going to spend a lot of your time raising money, um, which is not what anybody loves to do. You, you don't do that without being propelled and, and even compelled to to think of this as being on a mission from God and saying that it's worth it. Um, the second is, is really huge. The way they define their target audience, uh, for example, a campus life ministry or a city life ministry in Youth for Christ would say, let's look at all the kids who go to this school. There's 2,000 kids in the school. That's our audience. That's who we're trying to reach. That's who we're trying to work with. We see everything that we do in relation to uh, the the social travels and the patterns and the pathways that those kids in that school or that community go through. You know, if you're in city life and urban ministry, you're, you're looking at this, this uh, multi-block neighborhood and you're saying, what do the kids in this neighborhood do? What do they live with? It, it, you, you become a student of all that. Sometimes people in student ministries default to those kids who are on their roster, those kids who show up in church, who are naturally part of church. And if they bring their friends, that's good too, but they don't have that same sort of scope of saying we're all about this defined student population and we try to reach them and do whatever it takes to reach them. The defined student population, if it only exists on, of those who've already come to the church, well, then you typically are working with a type of kid that, uh, that keeps you perhaps away from um, this, the type of kid that Jesus would have said he came after to seek and to save the lost. Um, some of you say, you know, our, our student ministry is real seeker friendly. And I just want to point out to you, lost is not seeker. I mean, lost kids, by definition, are just stumbling around. They don't know. If you know where to look, you're not lost. If you know what door to knock on, you're not lost. Most of the kids we work with are clueless. More and more, we're finding ourselves talking to some kids and occasionally some kids who say, I, I've heard Jesus' name, but I don't know anything about him. And that's, there's a lostness there. And their, and their life situations are you know, routinely um, devastating to look at. And they just don't have the, the base and the foundation. So I think there's, there's got to be this, this sense of calling and clarity about what we're called to do um, that I think sometimes makes a difference. And, and uh, certainly when when it gets hard for us, and it gets hard for everybody who's ever doing anything in student ministry, 
uh, falling back to the clarity of your call makes a big difference. And that's one of the things that I think that those of us in the parachurch world, I think, have to have when you even get into the mix. And uh, I, I, would, I would wish for more of that for my brothers and sisters who do student ministry in the church. Um, there's something about working with people who are out there, something about uh, going, you know, the Great Commission while going into all the world, that, that going vision of how I live my faith and do my ministry, that if you get that right, it changes what it looks like when you say, come and see, come check us out. And I think the going is a, if I could, if I could bless the church in America with anything, as a parachurch person, I would want the church in America to recover the flexibility and the nimbleness that is, is absolutely required to be effective in evangelism. You have to be able to go, take it on the road. You have to see yourselves as the church dispersed. And um, I, I would hope that we might be able to help some ways. Next up on the show is Mark DeVries, and he's going to share this little Devo with you. I was at a graduation. It was my eighth graduation of the season, so I'd, I'd heard a pretty good bit of the launch pad of the future. But I, I decided to go late to the graduation, and, and I went to the, the graduation was at the Ryman Auditorium here in Nashville. And if you've ever been to the Ryman, you know that the, the balcony comes almost all the way down, all the way down to the front. So if you're in the front row of the balcony, you're actually closer to the stage than almost any place else in the, in the building. And as they were giving awards, they were finishing up with the very final award. The last award was the most prestigious award, this kind of kid of the year award. And the moderator, the MC said, uh, this young man was born in Russia. And when he was born, they thought he might never walk, but he ran on our track team. He moved to the United States at 10 years old, didn't speak a word of English, but he's graduating from our high school with honors. And um, this summer he'll be traveling to Israel to begin his studies to be a rabbi. And uh, they announced the boy's name, a Russian Jewish name, and everyone clapped politely like somebody just sank a three inch putt. Everyone except one person. I was in the very back row of the balcony because remember I'd come late and on the very front row of the balcony, this huge man reminded me of the grandfather in the children's movie, Heidi. This huge man, white beard, black yarmulke on the back of his head, huge man stands up with his arms in the air and just stands there. He just stands there for an embarrassingly long time. And he stands there until I assume it was his grandson, turns around, grabs his award, and looks back up at his grandfather, kind of shakes his head. And I walked away from that graduation thinking, you know, the next time I'm looking for a youth leader, I'm not looking for the coolest guy in town or the best looking girl in town. I'm just looking for a Jewish grandfather. I'm just looking for somebody who is gonna be irrationally supportive, irrationally loving the kids in our youth ministry. And isn't that what we're called to do as God's people, not just as youth pastors to be the Jewish grandfather, but also to surround kids who love them extravagantly, love them unconditionally. Thank you for what you do in being and finding and dispatching Jewish grandfathers into your ministry. Hey, thanks for watching the show this week. I want to invite you to connect with me. You can send me an email at adam at youthspecialties.com or look me up on Facebook or MySpace or Twitter, but nothing else. Those are the only ways you can look me up, okay? No more of those other social networks. I am tired of looking at people's like Tangle accounts. No more of that. Like we say every week, we want to remind you that what your ministry, it matters. You might not hear it from anybody else, but we want you to hear from our heart to yours that your ministry matters deeply to the parents that are involved, to the students, but most importantly, to the heart of God. Thanks for what you do. We love you, and we'll see you next week.